Hello, Mrs. Logar here to help you to interpret page 11 of the New York State Earth Science Reference Tables, which contains information about P wave and S wave travel times for earthquakes. Here's a look at what it looks like, but first we should dig in and take a look at what a seismogram looks like. Here's a typical example of a seismogram. It's got a bunch of little wiggles, and then you're going to notice the first big spike up or down that marks the arrival of the first P wave. Things start to settle down a little bit, and then we have another big spike either up or down, and that records the arrival of the S wave. We are going to be interested in only when the first P wave arrives and the time when the first S wave arrives. In order to do many of our earthquake problems, we are going to know, need to know the time difference between when the first P wave arrives and when the first S wave arrives. Sometimes we refer to this as our lag time or our difference in arrival time between the first P wave and the S wave. On your chart, you're going to see that there are two lines. There's a line for the P wave and there is a line for the S wave. The reason why there are two different lines is because these waves have different properties the P wave travels faster and can go through any type of material, solid, liquid, or gas. And the S wave travels slower and it can travel through solids only. We're going to zoom in a little bit so you can get a closer look at the scales that we're working with. Along the Y axis, we're going to see that the time scale is going up by increments of 20 seconds. Each line goes by 20 seconds, so 20, 40 and then 60 seconds would be one minute. The next line up would be a minute and 20 seconds. Along our X axis, our scale is going by 200 kilometers. So this would be 200, 400, 600, 800, and 1000 kilometers. This one is in scientific notation, one times 10 to the third. Therefore, the one is 1000, the two is 2000, 3000, and so on. We're going to take a look at a couple of example problems. For example, we might want to know how long would it take a P wave to travel 2,000 kilometers. To solve that problem, we would first locate 2,000 kilometers on the x-axis. We would draw a line up to the P wave, and then we are going to go over to the y-axis, and we would see that that would take four minutes of travel time for a P wave to cover 2,000 kilometers. Next, we're gonna take a look at how long would it take an S wave to travel 1,200 kilometers. To travel 1,200 kilometers, we're going to go up to that S wave and we are going to go over and see that that would take about four minutes and 40 seconds. Now we're going to go in reverse. We want to know how far can a P wave travel in five minutes. To do this, we have to start in the Y axis over here, go up to five minutes and then we're gonna draw a line over to our P wave, and then we're going to go down to our X axis. We would see that that would take, this is 2000, 2200, 2400. This would be 2600 kilometers. Is how far a P wave could travel in five minutes. Now, one of the other problems we, we might be interested in is how much longer does it take an S wave to travel a distance compared to a P wave. So in this example, we're going to look at 1,400 kilometers. And we're going to see how much longer it would take an S wave to travel that distance. So first we need to locate where 1,400 kilometers would be on our chart. That would be right here. We indicate that along the line in red. The line in red represents the time difference between when a P wave would arrive and when an S wave would arrive at a seismic station. So one of the easiest ways to solve this problem is to count the time up between, this is our lag time, in between the P wave and the S wave. So this would be one minute and this would be two minutes and then we could add another 20 seconds. So that would be a total of two minutes and 20 seconds after the arrival of the first P wave. I hope this helps you to interpret the P and S wave travel time chart on page 11 of the Earth Science Reference Tables. I think you are now ready to take on the check for understanding.